release video for version 13 of the Google Ads API. I'm Matija Tomazone, a Developer Relations Engineer on the Google Ads API team, and I will be walking you through the core updates in this release. We have plenty of features to discuss, so let's get to it! Starting with version 13, you can create performance maps for Travel Goals campaigns. This means you can create a new asset set type, Hotel Property, and link your hotels to a performance max for Travel Goals campaign. For further information on this, check out the guide linked in the video description. If some of your customer accounts are having their location and image feeds automatically migrated to assets, you now have the ability to track the status of these migrations thanks to the new fields added to the customer resource. These will allow you to not only know whether an account has been migrated from location and image feeds to better asset equivalents, but also exactly when the migrations happened. Speaking of migrating feeds to assets, the recommendations to optimize call, callout, and site link extensions now have been removed and replaced with new recommendation types based on assets. This will allow you to optimize according to our recommendations even after transitioning from feed-based ads to asset-based ads. Combined rule user list info and expression rule user list info have been removed from the API. You can use flexible user list info instead to manage your custom audiences. For further information on how to use flexible user list info, you can check out the guide we have about marketing with rule-based user lists. There is a link to it in the video description. There are many new error messages in version 13 to help you implement automatic error handling and debugging. For instance, you will now receive a clearer error message when trying to create an account budget proposal with a billing setup that is not in state approved. You will also receive clearer error messages when trying to work with enhanced conversions without having completed the required setup, or if you upload PII in your conversion upload request without having accepted the specific terms and conditions. And speaking of clearer information, bad jobs now have a field in their metadata that returns the execution time limit in seconds. This can be useful in determining the state of your running batch jobs and make sure they are not blocked. If you are using smart campaigns, there is a new method in the smart campaign setting service in version 13 called get smart campaign status that will allow you to retrieve precise and detailed information about whether your smart campaign is eligible for serving or it has any issues that you need to address. There is a new segment in the Shopping Performance View report called Product Feed Label that will be populated with the Feed Label field coming from Google Merchant Center. This follows the recent change on how country targeting works for shopping ads campaigns, and it will allow you to report your product metrics for any feed label, not just the country. So as you can see, there are a lot of updates, changes, improvements, and new ways to get exactly the information you need in version 13. The ones we just mentioned were just a few highlights, and we can't wait to see you try out all the new features in this version. For the complete list of changes that were included in version 13, check out our release notes. You can find that and other useful links in the video description below. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe to the channel to always be up to date with the Google Ads API.